Hello children of a lesser joint and welcome to today's video segment. I am now on part three of four sector diagnosis, a systematic approach to TMD and orofacial pain diagnosis. In the last video segment, I talked about using the four areas or four sectors of the information that's incorporated into making a diagnosis. I talked about how I was trying to hit the target area, which is the diagnostic area, by building what's called overlap syndromes. And this is predicated on putting information together that either the patient gives me, um, has had done uh, previously, or I will have it done in accumulating this data. The four sectors are actually fueling the information that I hope to use as what I call lead generators, almost like a sales marketing force in trying to figure out what prospective diagnoses may be as part of the symptoms that are given as well as imaging studies or prior blood studies. And before you get too restless, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you an excerpt from a case that I am currently investigating. So this is a young, a middle-aged woman, white, who came to me with a prior diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis with a positive CCP test called cyclic citrullinated peptidases. That's the name for the CCP. She had lower back pain, which translated into sacroiliitis. She's had uh, imaging studies done for this to take a look at her discs in the form of uh, her vertebrae in her lower back and sacrum. She also had acne from time to time. She's been on retinol A. In her temporomandibular joints, she has minor aching in her right joint. Pain is not really a major complaint or concern for her, but she does have a left side open bite and an anterior open bite. So let's take a look at that and see what it looks like. So you can see that this is the right side where the arrow is. She only makes contact on the right side. Notice how the front teeth and the left side do not make contact. She starts making contact probably at the second bicuspid area. If I take a look at the panoramic x-ray, you can take note of the fact that the joints actually look a little bit different. So on the right joint, which has somewhat of an angular component, and that's why I drew the, drew the yellow line above it, and I have put an annotation here for rheumatoid arthritis with a question mark, knowing that she is positive for the CCP. And then I put a plus sign, because to me, this may or may not be a rheumatoid joint. I'm not entirely convinced at the present time. Notice how the left side has sort of the shape of the end of your index finger. Even though there's this little bump in the road up above over here, sort of this little additional cap, I'm going to show you what parts of the CT scan from 2017 look like. So I know this shows up a little bit small on your screen, but there's actually a legend on this side which tells me that my left side and your left side are actually the patient's right. I'm looking at the left side now, and you'll notice how, in fact, in this particular view, the sagittal view, the condyle looks very much like the end of the finger. However, if you take a look on this left side from what's called the coronal view, you'll notice that there's this little lesion, which is gray over here, right at the tip of my arrow. And so I know something is going on with the left joint. And I'm going to expand on that for you and show you what that looks like. So this is what it looks like on the coronal plane 
here's the coronal enlargement. And if you take a look very closely here, there's kind of this sign that looks like a V almost, or an open U, and I've just highlighted it over here. Now that, that may be a sign that there could be some sort of coagulopathy, which I will not cover today. If I continue along the left side, and I get a little bit more into this area, you see on the sagittal view over here, it kind of looks like a small wrench. So I know something is going on on the left side, and I would also make note of the fact that perhaps the condyle has somewhat of a posterior displacement. I have not received MRIs yet, and I'm hoping to have those shortly. So the diagnosis uh, is still incomplete at this stage of the game, as or me um, finalizing what I think is going on over here. However, if I take a look at the right side, you can see there's a little legend over here, which is not too clear. That's where my little R is to tell me which side I'm on when I'm looking at these images. But if you'll take a look right over here, which I'm going to show you a larger image, image of, you'll notice that the right condyle in the sagittal plane is actually bird beaked. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. Now here I call this bird beaking because it looks like a bird's beak. And you can see that there's this outgrowth of bone. Well, there's more than one way to look at this. So let me tip you off. When you're looking at bird beaking, I call that a depositional disease. And that right away helps me transition into what diseases I might be looking for to format my blood tests. So as I go along over here, and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. Number one is I have established on the imaging of the CT scan, this is the axial view, so it looks like I'm looking down at this joint from the top, there are actually two parts going on over here. Notice how the left joint looks rather regular and somewhat like a kidney bean. However, on the right joint, I have a depositional disease. This could be osteoarthritis, but there's also another part to this. There are erosive changes going on, and here you can see the bird beaking going on on the axial view. This is actually the outside pole of the jaw joint, her right, okay? Uh, and, and you can see the sharp characteristics of this looking like a bird's beak again. But the part in the middle is somewhat erosive, yet it does also have a little bit of depositional component to it. Now, when I think about deposition of bone, you go to a category which helps to form a group of diseases. Most commonly, you're looking for ankylosing spondylitis. You could be looking at psoriatic arthritis in this group. Sacroiliitis is a part of this, or the lower back pain. And notice, when I gave you the symptoms, I didn't talk about the number of joints, but there's really only two. It's a lower back, considered a joint, and number two is a right temporomandibular joint. We call this a porciarthritis, less than five joints. Notice the left side is more normal than the right. My case is asymmetrical. There was no evidence, really, of irritable bowel disease. And incorporated into this group, I can also include a reactive arthritis. That caused by infection. The markers I'm going to use for the group, which is depositional, are the HLA B27. And if you remember, I did a little lecture on HLA, which is the first lecture I put together for this group. 
and what's called ASCA, Antisaccharomyces cerevisiae, a yeast-like organism, and antibodies produced against this. So one of the things that you now realize what may be going on here is that I can take a remote site from the gut and I can take it and place it in a joint. Now she doesn't have the symptoms at the present time of any real irritable bowel diseases. Notice how I also talked about P. acne. Now I can take P. acne as an organism and I can place it in sarcoidosis area. I can place it in a disease called SAPO. I did a lecture on that in the sarcoid series. Okay, I can put it in Crohn's disease. And that's in fact part of this irritable bowel disease. I could put it, I could put it now I can jump from irritable bowel disease into ulcerative colitis if I want. But again, there are no bowel symptoms. But based on the presentation of the joint on the imaging studies, I'm going to go looking. And that's part of my overlap model. And I'll show you how I put that together within the next couple of series. So what I wanted to show you over here is, in fact, I did do the blood studies. I came back with a positive Saccharomyces cerevisiae IgG that puts me in Crohn's country. I also had a positive HLA B27, so I have the genetic predisposition. So there I am in Crohn's disease or potentially ankylosing spondylitis. And I ran a couple of organisms just for this particular section. I ran mycoplasma pneumonia which is often associated with rheumatoid arthritis, and sure enough, there was at least prior exposure, and that puts me close to rheumatoid arthritis. And when I was thinking about reactive arthritis, I ran the chlamydia species, and I came back with a positive IgG and IgA. So now I have to consider as to what the attributes of this may mean, and I can order if I would like to, a gallium-67 scan, which would give me more information about whether or not I thought the scales were tipped in favor of an infectious process. But let's say I make a referral for this patient to a rheumatologist or a gastroenterologist, and the gastroenterologist takes a look at the studies, knows exactly what they mean, and, and does an endoscopy. And he finds she doesn't have Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis at the present time. Well, what does the literature say about the positivity of these markers? Well, that's called a PPV, positive predictive value. And that would indicate, based on the studies of the authors that I have given you above, that the positive predictive value would be that she will convert from the time of identification of positive blood serum markers 100% of the time within 36 to 38 months. So someone's got to be on top of this and looking out for this patient. If the rheumatologist or gastroenterologist wanted to get a little bit um, involved with this, they could also provide somewhat of an aggressive therapy in trying not only to handle the GI issues, but the musculoskeletal issues associated with the progression to failure of this particular joint on the right side and now somewhat on the left. So I will leave you as I close today with this little thought. I'd like you to think about it. Sometimes it's not quite as important for you to just see something. It's not just what you see, but how you see it. So here you got a little lesson. I hope you'll join me again for the next segment when I'm rocking it out with Jaw Talk.